So welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new parser and using self-registration have this parser called um, by the TCP protocol. So the first thing I'm going to show you is I've taken an HTTP trace and I've modified it a little bit. Normally this destination port is 80, but I've changed it to this value, which is in hex, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that we can easily find it. And this is the port I'm going to use to call my new protocol. So the next thing we'll go is to the parsers tab and we'll create a new parser. And again, I'm going to call this protocol XXX. And it's going to have two data fields. The first one is going to be a UNT 16, which is one of our basic data types that we've created for you. And we'll call this a command. Second, we'll use a UNT 32, which is just another data type you have available to you. And this is the type. And then we'll save it. So we're going to save it. We're going to put it in the parsers directory, which is the default. It's in your uh, local uh, user's path. Um, and I'm going to call it xxx.mpl. And the reason that's good is because it's actually defaulted the default path for our parser search order. And this is just simply the path that's used to look for MPL files. So it's going to look in this order, starting at the top, for every MPL file, including sparser.mpl, which you'll see is important because we're going to have to modify that file. So when, en when the engine goes to compile, the first thing it does is it looks for sparser.mpl. And then that file contains links to all the other MPL files. So you can see here that we have an include for each MPL file, a bunch of them. And this is the global list, the master list of all the MPL files. So we're going to add our new protocol, include xxx.mpl. And we're just going to add that line in there. We'll save this file. It says access denied, and that's because we don't have rights to write to our application data directory. This is probably okay. We'd actually not want to write over this file because another version of Network Monitor might come and rewrite it and erase our changes. So instead, we're going to save it in our local directory, sparser.mpl, and we'll rebuild. So the reason that works the reason it finds this new sparser.mpl instead of the one before is because, again, of the directory order. It searches my directory first and then the others uh, after that. So now that it's successfully built, I'm going to prove that it now sees our protocol. And as you can see here, the, in the list, our protocol now shows up. So now it's found it. But we're still not done yet because somebody has to call us. In this case, we want TCP, when port 1234 is found, to call our protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the TCP protocol and show you the first method of registering yourself. But this is not recommended. There might be some cases where you have to do this, but there's we're going to show you the second method which is the self registration which is a little bit more elegant so here in tcp you can see that we have a, a place where we switch on the port number and based on which port it is we call the other protocols so we could add a case statement for hex one two three four and call protocol xxx but instead we're going to use the self registration feature or plugin of network monitor to register ourselves. So the way this works is in the these directive boxes, these brackets, which are really just directives to the compiler, um, we're going to do a register after. And we're going to fill it in with the three parameters. The first parameter is where in TCP we want to register. So to find that out, let's go back and look at TCP. And say we want to register right after FTP. So the first parameter that we would send is the full path to FTP. 
Now that happens to start with TCP, which is the protocol name. And then in this case, there's actually another level to our path that we've got to add in because of this struct. This struct is a hidden struct because it begins with an underscore. We do this so we don't confuse the user with a bunch of um, tree indentations in the frame details that he doesn't need to see. But we still have to use this when referencing data in um, the protocol TCP or any protocol. So we know that it's TCP, and now our IntelliSense pops up here, so that's great. TCP payload, we said. And now we want to do it for FTP. There's only one version there, so we know that's the right one. The next parameter is the instantiated name, the name that's going to show up in the UI. So for that, I'm going to put my XXX just to differentiate it from the protocol name. The final parameter is what you want that case statement to be. So in our case, we're going to make it 1234, and we'll save the file, and let's go ahead and build it now. So now that the file is built, we'll go back to our capture, and we can see now that it is in fact now parsed our protocol, which is what we wanted. And if we go ahead and look at the frame details, we can see that the protocol name is myxxx, like we expected. The first data field we created was a command, which is 16 bits in size, and the second one's 32. So we've now instantiated our protocol, which is exactly what we're looking to do. The next thing I want to talk about real quickly is that you, in some cases, you might not want a simple port reference. Perhaps you're using a port 1234, but you also want to look ahead to see if this data matches before you actually call your protocol. So this can be done as well. The difference is, is you will have to find a different place in the host protocol if you're using TCP in this instance that doesn't use just a port. So in TCP there happens to be other locations and if we look down just a little bit further in the default case for TCP we actually have what is called an empty switch, a switch with no um, parameter there, which means that all the case statements are going to be um, evaluations of some sort. So, in fact, if we come down a little bit further, we can see that we have a case statement that's just a bunch of comparisons. And in this case here, we have a uh, another case statement, which is basically doing a typecasting of the current location, kind of like a look ahead. And so we could do the same thing in our register after or register before, and we could change this last parameter to be a, an evaluation instead. The only difference is, is we would have to change the register after so that the location we use here correctly identifies that. So instead of FTP in this case, we'd want to use SSL or RPC HTTP. Now in some cases, it might change the complete path if there are other structures or hidden structs, but you'd have to go find those. The IntelliSense will also help you identify the, the correct path when you're using this as your editor. So hopefully you've learned how to use the self-registration technique and understand how to create a simple protocol and get Network Monitor to recognize it so your frames can be parsed. So that's all for now in this video. Hope you've enjoyed. <music>